guys, what's up Unrested back again. I'm doing the walk and talk because I found out last week when I was set to do a couple of these walking and talking JFACs that a couple people wrote to me saying, hey Scott, you know, you talk badly about doing the walk and talk and not sitting down in front of your mic and recording at home, but we actually like the walk and talk a lot better than the mic ones where you just sit it in front of your computer and talk. So. I'm getting a little bit of both sides asking for somewhere I'm at home. My sound is a heck of a lot better because as you can see right now, I'm in front of a gas station over here with a lot of loud like vacuuming sounds and fixing sounds that kind of distort the background. But some people said, that's okay, we like the ambience. Put it in there and make those walk and talk JFAX just as much as you make the ones at home. So I'm thinking probably what I'm gonna do is keep the walk and talk, a little bit of those through the week and a little bit of the sit at home and talk on my microphone. Maybe. That's a little bit better for unrestology, where I'm just kind of rambling around and it's okay that I'm not as uh, aware of the street around me and adding the street behind me because it tends to just be topics I want to talk about, whereas this always tends to be JFAC about Japan. Obviously, JFAC Japan's frequently asked questions. It's good if I do have Japan in the background for those. So that's what we'll continue to do. If you do not like that, please let me know. If you are for that, please let me know. Uh, likes or dislikes, thumbs up, thumbs down, just let me know what you guys prefer and I will do it for you. Let's jump into our topic today. Our topic is about a public school in Japan. Now, the paper was a little bit ambiguous with the details that they were giving about what uh, high school this was. I, 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 I say high school, but um, it started out by saying that it was a public school and then later it says it's a high school. And then I think I saw in another article they listed it as a junior high school. So. I'm a bit conflicted as to where and what school this exactly happened, but most definitely it did happen uh, because the guy was actually quoted in the newspaper as having actually said this. A principal at the school um, gave a talk to his students about how women should grow up to only want to have children as their main goal in life. That means they grow up, they get married, they have children. That's the only goal that they should have in life, and that goal should be two children. Um, work is not the place for them. Being at home, being housewives, and raising two children should be their main focus in life. In life. And now he's taking a lot of backlash for that, um, understandably so, seeing as that is like some sort of 1940s, 1950s, like super sexist, backwards thinking. Um, and he's trying to defend that. And this is kind of where we run into some problems here in Japan. Number one, I'm sure as soon as you're hearing this story, you're thinking, how did that idiot get in charge of a school? Um, why is he not already fired? Um, how did someone report him? And what was the lash, how did people lash back? How, what kind of uh, conflict did it create within the education board that it was reported to, which it was reported to the Osaka Education Board, hence I'm covering the story here in Osaka. Um, well, a couple things there. Um, number one, one of the biggest problems I see and this is just my own personal opinion. There might be statistics that show that this works great, but longevity in Japan gets you a higher position rather than meritocracy. So by that I mean, even if you're doing a great job, you are the best teacher at your school, you're handling everything great, everything's in order, you're a great leader, the kids love you, you're still gonna have to do your time and wait your time until you've been at that school or in the school education system for quite some time before you would have the position of being a principal or a kocho sensei. And look, I'm not trying to knock longevity, okay? Longevity is very useful in the fact that you have long-term experience with your job, you have a sort of intimate relationship with your job, know the ins and outs of it that nobody else would know for having worked there for a very long time, knowing how procedures work without having them need to be explained to you, and just overall veteran status. That can be very helpful to have someone in the position, but when you use meritocracy, you are choosing someone because they are a jack of all trades. They know how not only to do that job, but perhaps they are good at communicating what the means of that job are and what kind of messages need to be communicated because they are also well versed in the way of speeches or whatever else that job encounters. Like I said, meritocracy, jack of all trades, longevity, you may just get a jackass instead. So that's another thing we've seen before happen with, for example, NHK. The CEO, the head of NHK is very well known now for making a very loud and clear statement that comfort women were definitely needed during World War II and that Japan shouldn't have to apologize for that. 
again, another guy that he might be awesome at running the company, but he should shut the fuck up when it comes to speeches, public speeches, that is. And it sounds like this guy's kind of in the same boat. Um, his defense of the statement that he made is due to the fact that he said, well, number one, uh, I'm saying that that is the greatest joy that a woman can have is if she makes sure she's a housewife and takes care of two kids. I'm not saying women have to do this, but you know, I think that's pretty much their goal in life. And uh, number two, he says, no one has directly confronted him that they are hurt about his message. And it's like, the reason that this is in the newspaper is because someone made an anonymous complaint to the education board. Okay, usually that's probably gonna be a student. They wanted to stay anonymous. They were scared because they don't wanna to talk to a teacher in a high position. Um, that tends to be the case when you're just a young teenager and you're trying to complain about something at a school where you have little to no power because you're still climbing the ladder of getting even out of school. You haven't worked your first job. Or maybe it's a parent who doesn't want to start a conflict within the school. Why they would go straight to the principal to not start a conflict uh, is, I think, a pretty obvious reason. So, yes, obviously someone was hurt and they didn't go straight to you because you sound like a jerk and they probably weren't comfortable talking to you. Um, on top of that, he said that his speech was one of 60 speeches or something he had given through the year. I think, no, 30 speeches, sorry. His age is 61. His speeches were 30 different speeches that he had given over the year about child rearing and taken out of that regiment of speeches that it's uh, totally being taken out of context. Nonetheless, obviously, someone took it in the context that it hurt them and they made a complaint. So. However you meant for it to be communicated, it wasn't communi commu communicated in a proper way in which people were left offended, okay? And now, of course, the education board is trying to figure out uh, what kind of penalties he's going to face, um, if he'll be punished, uh, if he'll be taken out of his position, um, which I really, I hope he is. I hope he is taken out of his position because this is what you're seeing um, when you allow people like this to rise up in levels of command, I don't know, levels of seniority due to longevity, you get a person who thinks that everything they say and do uh, should be unfettered by those below him, and that they're allowed to make long-winded speeches about their own personal, I guess, opinions, political opinions, life opinions, um, when they're really old, outdated, and uncalled for. I mean, we're talking about the year 2016. And we're talking about a country that's still having a massive problem having women in high-level career positions. And one of those problems is people like this guy. Um, the UN itself has already put penalties on Japan for still being in a situation where there's little to no women CEOs in this country. Um, there's been many countries that won't do business with Japan because there's not women higher up in positions. And we're not just talking like, oh yeah, they want to get equal pay and stuff like that. Equal pay isn't even something they've even touched on. That's way below what men make here. Um, the hours that they have to work extra, the jobs that they'll work on the same level as the men and get paid way, way less. That's, that's still a common occurrence here in Japan. We're just talking about them being able to climb the corporate ladder, okay? We're talking about basic, basic rights. Um, on top of that, I mean, the fact that we're dealing with a country right now where depopulation is a big problem, there are ways to go about helping people out. For example, one of the biggest problems we have here is there's not enough kindergartens. There's not enough support from the government. Um, prices are too high on just about damn near everything from food to diapers to child care, um, finding a kindergarten, paying for a kindergarten, paying for health care, etc. Um, and those are the first things we need to look at to encourage people to have children. We don't need to encourage people to have children by sending half of the working force home. Um, it's just such a backwards way to look at it, and it's a sad but true situation of what happens when longevity takes presence in different types of workplaces, education systems like that around Japan, and allows people like this to rise up unfettered and unchallenged by whatever their position is. And uh, just from my own personal opinion, I myself, as I've worked in managerial positions and stuff like that, I've taken the time to really try and find meritocracy within workplaces that I work at um, and to put aside longevity just because I myself too even think this is 
how it should evolve, especially if I'm working at an international school. Well, things can be run in a somewhat international way. Whether or not that needs to be changed in Japan is not really up for me to say. It's allowed, of course, for me to make my own opinion about it because this is my channel and I'll do whatever I damn well please. But whether or not this actually happens, changes, or is regulated in Japan when people like this are put into a position where they play host to their own personal, social, and political, I guess, agendas, if you will, then uh, I don't see much progression in a lot of the workplaces and positions for women around uh, all of Japan. Until next time, I'm Unrested with the questions you requested. This is JFAG, Japan's Frequently Asked Questions. You guys have a good one.